All right. Well, welcome to Consults Over Coffee. And we have a, re a return visitor tonight, Brian Harris. I guess I'm getting lapped by Brian Harris again because he showed back up on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Harris of Harris Training Systems with, with 4 million degrees, right? I mean, you've got degrees in, in exercise science, human nutrition, sports nutrition, human movement, right? I mean, hair, I mean, yeah, it's kind of been one of those things where I just always want to learn more. So I just kept going to school. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I well, up, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's fun. It's, I think you should learn something new every day. So that's the way I looked at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's the same mentally and physically. I mean, right. You just have to kind of stay out there and keep going at it or, or you wind up going backwards. Yep. You know? For sure, and, and I, I guess the, the the thing I wanted to talk about tonight, is speaking of going backwards, is I think there's a a large segment of the population that, thanks to the the, the COVID lockdown and and winter in general, have have largely gone backwards physically, and and now that things are opening back up, the I know down here the Richmond Marathon, which is a, a big deal, is going to be in person this fall. You know, and, and stuff starting to open back up and people are starting to get back and, and get into competition or want to get back into competition. And, and so my question to you is for all those folks out there that were sitting inside watching TV, maybe going to the gym a little bit, but now we're trying to get serious again and they've got to lose some weight and they've got to build some base and they want to run the Richmond half marathon or a marathon in the fall. How do you start without blowing yourself up? <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, it's it's you know kind of like what we talked about last time. Just you know, if you haven't been doing anything, you got to take baby steps in the beginning. And I mean, the, always the goal with this stuff is to prevent injury. You know, you don't want to get back out there in the very first week you blow out of your calf or something and you can't do anything anymore. So the key is balance you know between jumping back into it and recovery and uh not not pushing too hard too fast you know sometimes sometimes i tell people you know when you when you haven't if they haven't been running in a year let's say they need to get out there and just walk first just do some fast walking and maybe some walk jogs and might be as simple as walk a block jog a block walk a block jog a block you know for the first first few weeks and then build into that continuous running phase do you, do you have folks do i know there are, there are apps and programs like the couch to 5k or the couch to 10k yeah program. there's a lot of those programs out there for sure i mean i look at everything more on an individual basis you know i kind of try to see what that person's been doing you know, if they've been doing anything and then, and then build on that. And sometimes those programs, you know, to couch to 5k, sometimes that involves just some running, you know, some, just some, I mean, some walking, just some basic gold walking, getting out there and walking fast and building up some endurance and, you know, building up those muscles and tendons. So you don't get injured for sure. Got to be smart about it. You know, you can't, can't just jump back into it and yeah. expect miracles yeah and that's the thing i think i've i've kind of seen and, and certainly have experienced myself is that you, you you come blown out of the blocks you know and then and then two weeks later or a month later you're either hurt or you're just burned out yeah yeah i mean there's there's been a lot of research done on you know how how you should progress through those things and you know when you're starting something new and and i like to look at it as you know probably you know you know if you go out and let's say you jog a mile the first day and then you take a couple of days off you know you don't go out and jog two miles the second time out you know that'd be a hundred percent increase in your yeah. your duration i mean you got to think of like simple like one percent increases here you know and um most likely i mean if a person just wants to get out and run 5k eventually you know they, they're probably going to be able to do it if they can jog a mile or two, you know, and then that right. third, I mean, so 
don't you know the, i remember someone telling me one time years and years ago uh with downhill skiing you know i mean when you're when you're fatigued after half a day of downhill skiing you shouldn't go and do two more runs or three more runs you know you gotta you gotta gotta give it some rest so it's no different with jogging or running or cycling or anything you know you you gotta progress and progress slowly well and, and and to that end yeah like how do you how do you advise people like, like, how do you know what's enough or what's too much, particularly for folks that are just starting out? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you have to, again, you know, you have to look at what you've been doing. I mean, if you've been totally inactive, just sitting on a couch doing or in a chair or whatever for the past year, you know, you shouldn't expect to be able to go out and jog or run a, a mile right away you know like i said i mean maybe you need to just go out and jog a block and then walk a block you know so um you have to think about what you've been doing already i mean if you've been doing a little bit then a little bit of jogging or a little bit of exercise then you might be able to do a little bit more but you know and also the key is to rest in between this stuff too you know, you might be able to go out and jog a mile today, but as I said earlier, you got to rest after that. If you go out and try to jog, you know, get all hyped up about it and go jog another mile the next day and the next day, you know, that's going to get you injured. You know, come up with a plan where maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and maybe it's, maybe it is just jogging a mile each of those days. And after a couple of weeks, then you can start to bump that up a little bit. But again, you know, like a one or 2% increase per week is plenty. Is about it. I mean, you don't want to, you know, increase it too much. And again, you have to rest between the stuff. Well, and I think, yeah, that's the thing. I think, you know, in injury undoes a lot of good training, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, you know, if, if you, if you, yeah, that's a big part of this whole thing. You know, I mean, a lot of people, for example, are sitting on the sofa or sitting on the couch because they're injured. So how do you come back from that? I mean, you got to be patient. You got to, it's, it's a two part, two part drill there, you know, the mental part and the physical part, because I mean, you can get back into it, but, you know, mentally you have to be positive. You have to think positive. You don't want to jump into it too fast. You got to be patient, you know, um, it's a, definitely a big process. I'm, I'm always kind of interested in, in um, the aspect of, of folks that just the mental fatigue. Yeah. You know, cause I, you know, it's not like I'm out training now, but even still like I, now that I'm retired, I'm, I'm much more active than I was when I was working full time. I'm nowhere near what I was when you and I were racing against each other. But, but I still I have these days where it's just, you know, it's the idea of like, well, man, I, I just, I don't feel I just can't go out there. Like I can't ride, I can't get on the bike today. I just, you know, or, or like you resent the idea that like, man, really, I got to go ride today. Right, and, right. And, and, and I just find at least for me that you kind of have to train your head too, which also, you know, means knowing when to push your head and knowing when to kind of listen and go, you know what, today might be an okay day to go for a jog or just go for a walk or go to the gym or do something, but right. do something differently. Cause, cause that resentment, I, I kind of think that for, especially for a lot of folks that get into endurance sports, you're in it for the long haul. You know, and, and if you keep hammering when you're tired and when you're mentally tired, those guys disappear. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that mental fatigue is, is tough and it's, it's a good, it's, it's half the battle for sure. The mental aspect, you know, and if you're, especially if you're coming back from an injury, um, you know, it can be really hard on you, you know, and there's that stigma you know with the whole mental health aspect too you know is out there and so you know people are afraid to talk about it and, um it can be tough for sure 
Well, and I remember reading stuff too, it's especially in, in like high volume endurance folks, that when you get really overtrained or over like depressive symptomatology starts to set into some to folks. Yeah, for sure. Maybe kind of your body's way of going, dude, sit down. Yeah. I mean, there was a, you know, there was just recently a big pro cyclist, you know, like the, I think he uh, won the world championship time trial possibly. And he took a big break for about, I think, I think like four or five months he just said he can't do it anymore and is that dumoulin tom dumoulin yeah he just came yeah. back he just yeah. won he just won the his country's time trial national time trial over the weekend he i mean rested yeah he was he was well rested no <laughs> doubt about it but he was having a tough time he had no you know you lose your love for the sport you know that you used to love um years ago i had an issue like that where uh, you know, like after an injury, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I mean, this is just like drudgery. I mean, uh, so, you know, I took a year off or whatever and came back. Something else. Yeah. I just went and lifted weights and, you know, still exercise, but just did something different with, without that daily grind, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, that, that resentment, man, that it, it just, it, it, if you're out there and you're not happy about being out there, you're not going to, you're not going to perform as well, I don't think. Right. Well, exactly. <clears throat> well, it's like what we talked, you know, earlier. I mean, that whole performance thing and just the resentment. You got. I mean, to go outside, it's like training indoors, like what you're saying. I mean, you sit indoors and pedal a bike indoors. I mean, some people love it, but you know, to, in my mind, you got to get outside and enjoy the scenery, the weather, and you know, have some fun with it, but absolutely. No, I, it's, I, I love, I, it's the big part for me is just to get outside. Yeah. So, you know, and, and back to the idea of rest, I mean, we talked a little bit about having to kind of rest your head. If you start to feel that you're, you're sort of getting fatigued, mentally fatigued from the efforts, but you know, what about rest, especially in, in older athletes? I mean, rest, Rest is doing nothing is every bit as important as, as doing something if you want sure. to get better, right? And I mean, you know, there is such things as active rest, active rest for some sports are good, you know, it's like cycling. I mean, go out and just do a super, super easy pedal around the neighborhood just to get the legs moving and helps you loosen up a little bit. Um, but your body definitely needs that full rest. I mean, got to take a day off here and there and let your body recover especially well, with especially with endurance athletes i think you know it's just a you know you're grinding you know even though cycling for example is non weight bearing you know you're just grinding out these these this power on these pedals you know hour after hour and you need to you need to get off that you know and just let it recover let everything recover well, because when you basically, I mean, when you're training, if you're training right, you're 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 injuring muscle in in a small way, right? For sure. Micro tears, you know, in a sense. Yeah, and so it like, needs it needs the time to heal. Yeah. To get better. So if you just keep tearing it down and don't give it time to build back up, you go backwards, right? Yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, especially with running, because, you know, it's, it's so much pounding on the body. I mean, you know, you, you just have to take some time off, especially, you know, that's the whole point of being patient and, and not pushing too, too hard or too fast in the beginning after you're coming off the couch for six months, you know, you have to, you have to be careful, you have to be patient. So if somebody wanted to, to say, okay, you know what, they got a marathon in the fall or a half marathon in the fall. And, and yeah, I used to run a fair amount, but I haven't really done anything in the last eight months or whatever, 12 months. How much time do you, do you generally, and again, if, this is a very broad question, but how much time, you know, would you say someone needs to go from essentially a, a deconditioned or, or untrained or, or yeah, deconditioned athlete to I'm ready to go run 
middle and high dis upper distance competitively? Well, I mean, I think you can you can definitely build a program for someone that has some base miles in them, for example. Uh, to get to marathon distance in 12 to 20 weeks, just depending on how much they've been doing. Um, the key again, though, is, you know, how much have they been doing prior to the start? If they, do they have a bunch of base miles, just super easy base mile jogs, maybe even some walks, you know, where they're just getting that you know, body doing those, that same motion, that repetitive motion. Um, but if you're taking someone that hasn't done anything, you know, you got to start really slow because you have to get those base miles and those, those just long, slow, slow, slow distance workouts. Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, you know, even with, even with building up to a marathon, you know, you get to a point where you don't go out and run a full marathon, right. you know, you know, you're only, only building up to 19, 20, 21 miles, depends on the person. And then from there, you, you, you know, you rest a couple of weeks and then go run the marathon, but um, you can do it for sure. I mean, 16 weeks, I like to think of as a good beginners type build, you know, starting kind of from scratch in a sense. Yeah, but uh, and probably better to give yourself a little more time than a little less time to prepare, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, the more the better, because again, you know, I think if you have if you have a person that two people, you know, one person's been getting two months worth of just super slow jogs in, and then this person over here hasn't done anything for six months. I mean, this person here is going to be able to, you know, that's been doing the slow jogs, you're going to build, be able to build them up faster to a marathon. I mean, it's kind of simple, but uh, it's just the way it goes. I mean, they're going to be able to do some interval work, whereas the person that's been sedentary probably won't do much interval work. It's just going to be a slow build with the number of miles, you know. Um, the more advanced you are, the more interval work you'll be doing in that build process in order to get faster and stronger. Whereas a beginner, you know, you're not really gonna do any of that kind of interval work. It's just building base miles and distance and week after week after week. What, so which, yeah, I was gonna say, so for an uninitiated person, how, how long, and again, a very broad question, um, but how long is that base period? Do you, do you generally, like to let folks go yeah i mean i like to look at that just that base period of you know good like six weeks um and i kind of do kind of build um you know the process of periodizing a workout so you're actually building for a period of time and then kind of backing off and letting the body recover so i like to do kind of four week cycles like that where you build for th three or four weeks and you back off for a week and let your body rebuild itself. Don't put in as much miles. Sometimes um, I've built programs before where I actually have a person take a full week off, you know, where they built up. And so now it's just a week of rest, maybe some easy walks and stuff, and then jump back into it and build to the next part and then build to the next phase, you know. So again, it kind of depends on where the person's at, but for sure. There's lots of options there. I think the key is, is always making sure you don't get injured. So giving yourself time to recover from these runs is key. You know, I mean, if it's so structured where you have, you know, a five mile run today and, you know, a three mile run tomorrow and an eight mile run the next day, it's probably going to be too much unless you're just a really seasoned athlete, yeah. you know, you need to take time off between those runs. And, and let me ask you this, because I've, I've had this conversation a couple times recently. As you know, especially endurance athletes, man, we're, we're suckers for data, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know? I am, that's for sure. <laughs> no, and, and I was there too. Like, I mean, you know, it's a, the old thing we should, you didn't have a file, you didn't do the ride. 
right? Right. Right. Exactly. Like, and, 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 and so, you know, measuring wattage, measuring heart rate, average speed. I mean, all, I mean, if, if you can measure it, we want to know about it. Right. But, but what about, you know, someone who's just coming into this, like, do you need all those metrics? I mean, clearly for, I think for a, an advanced athlete, <laughs> when you're really trying to fine tune stuff, mm -hmm. I think that stuff is really, can be really, really helpful. For sure. I mean, I think it's necessary at that point. At that level. Right. You but, gotta have But, you know, for the average, you know, for the average guy who shows up, you know, at the Saturday morning 5K, I mean, does he, does he, you know, I think, I think it depends on the individual partially because there's some people that are numbers people. They want to yeah. see that. They want to be able to improve on those, those metrics each week or each month. Um, some people don't care at all. You know, they don't, they don't have, you know, they don't want the heart rate monitor. They don't want the power numbers. They don't want the average speed none of that kind of stuff. So if it's, if it's motivational to have that stuff, I think it's super important. I mean, some of the people I coach, for example, are hundreds and, or a thousand miles away from here. So they're sending me their data. And so it kind of gets ingrained into their mind that the data is important. You know, those, those metrics, that's how we gauge how to, you know, jump them to the next level. Yeah. I mean, I, re I remember the era of like, well, we're training on perceived effort. Right. Right. I mean, back, that, back in the old, that didn't work. Today we ride hard. <laughs> right. right. Today we're, today we're going hard. Tomorrow we're going easy. Maybe that was better that way, actually. You know, I don't know. I mean, but, but you're, I think your point is like, if, if, if it, if it gets you out there and it makes you, feel better about doing it or motivates you to do it to 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 work out or to train it's a good thing i there there is a dark side to all of that data which is you can kind of become a slave to your numbers oh for sure yeah definitely and then yeah. then you lose the fun aspect of the whole thing so i mean you know like we talked about earlier i mean getting outside and going for a jog or going for a bike ride is part of the fun part is just seeing what's around and looking at nature <laughs> right relax a little you know but if you're always always got those numbers in your mind maybe that's not a good thing i don't know i mean i'm kind of pretty much a numbers guy and as we talked earlier off the show here i mean a year ago a year and three months ago i started using that strava app that you can use for running or cycling and it it's a great app to um watch your progress and, and have your friends you know work with you and see the progress as well um i had never used it and i didn't like it but now i love it because it kept me motivated during the lockdown you know i mean it it's it's really motivational to have some of that stuff so i think it depends on the individual i think you have to just ask that question you know like do you care about that stuff or do you want to just go out and relax and get out of your mind, you know, and, 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 and just look at nature. Yeah. Well, and I think as long, I guess, as long, maybe what you're, what you're saying is, is as long as it works for you rather than you work for it. Perfect. Yeah. That's probably a good, way. good thing. Right. I mean, Oh yeah. I mean, I can yeah. remember days of, of going out and doing efforts where like, okay, here's your target wattage. And I'm out there and I'm clearly tired and I can't hit the numbers. Right. So the, the intelligent, the evolved mammal would kind of go, you know what, you need to just kind of put it in the small ring and pedal home and enjoy the day and rest. <laughs> but, but my unevolved that? primate brain, you know, is like, <laughs> no, damn it. I'll, I'll get, I'll hit that number yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out a way to do it. You know. Right. And and then oh, you just wonder why you're flat for the next five days. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I mean, that happens, it happens to everyone, I think. I mean, I used to do these track workouts, running and cycling. And, you know, you go to the track and you have it all written down, mapped out exactly what you're going to do. 
and there's times you get there and you know you clearly aren't hitting the numbers you're supposed to be hitting so you know if you had a coach with you all the time they would tell you to go home you know get right. some rest, get some rest for a few days and i think that's the best aspect of having a coach work with someone and guiding them through you know these workouts and and building after injury because it's tough to tough to hold yourself back you know tough to put the pull the reins back and and relax a little bit oh yeah man i'm i'm like i was i mean i was always like a lizard looking for a fly if it moved i'm on it and it was right. just it was just it was just you know that that discipline is a, is a hard thing sometimes right i mean oh, easy, yeah. the hardest sure. thing to do sometimes is do nothing right right yeah I mean, you know, and there's, I was just thinking, you know, as we were talking about that, you know, a lot of people, you know, race themselves into shape in the beginning of the season. You know, they just pick these in cycling, these criteriums or these time trials to keep jumping themselves, their selves, themselves up in, in strength and power. And, you know, you, you can do it that way, but is that really the right way to do it? Probably not because you're not really you know, balancing or periodizing the workouts, you know, you're just going out and racing on the weekends and hoping you get stronger. Yeah. So yeah. I think, you know, people should look, look at trying to develop a better balanced workout and making sure they're not progressing too fast, you know? No, I think, I think there is, there's a lot of value in, in either in, in, in having either a coach or in training with people yeah you know yeah. who who kind of can sort of be an extra pair of eyes on you yeah you know yeah and i mean getting back to those metrics real quick you know there's a couple guys i know they have no computers on their bikes you know they just go out and they don't want any of that stuff you know and it's bizarre to me but <laughs> you know whatever works <laughs> it's true well, so, you know, we've been talking about people trying to get ready and, and, and get trained and, and develop uh, and improve. Um, certainly, most cities and we have here, we have marathon training teams and all those things, and they're good. But if, if folks are looking for a coach, Brian, how they can they get a hold of you? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you could. Are you going to put the, my email address on there somewhere? Or you want yeah, to ask? sure. So, B. Harris. Yeah. 206 at comcast.net you can do that or you can look me up on instagram or facebook and what it's harris training systems right yes that's harris that's training. where yeah that's where you'd look for me on facebook for example yes yeah cool send me a message you know through that through that uh messenger thing attached to the to the Harris training systems on Facebook and I'll get back to you. Yeah. And well, certainly hard to find a guy that's more experienced and more capable than you. I mean, <laughs> thank you very much. No, very I've, I've, <laughs> trust me. I've suffered at the hand of it. <laughs> yeah. right? He's doing something that works so. Right. Well, Brian, <laughs> thanks very much for doing this, man. I really, it's always good to talk with you. I always learn a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I hope, hope it helps someone out there and they can balance their workouts with their life and do what they want to get done. Absolutely. Well, that's another consults over coffee. I'm Mike Jones. This is Brian Harris of Harris Training Systems. And uh, we'll be back next week.